Hello friends! Today I'm going to be attempting to make three different headpieces. This was inspired by an idea of mine that I attempted to do already but was a complete failure. I made a video a few months back trying to recreate one of Cami Pomeranian's headpieces here. Well, this isn't really exactly a headpiece, it's more of a head arrangement. <laughs> the issue that I ran into when I tried making this video originally was that I wasn't ready to commit to turning my plushies and my toys into full-on hair accessories. I wasn't ready to like sew in clips to them or anything like that, so I tried to use bobby pins and it was a disaster. <laughs> I am going to try to make a unit that will go on my head, so I'm going to basically decorate three different headbands to kind of look like a full head arrangement. I'm just kind of calling it a head arrangement. I don't know what to really call this trend in Lolita fashion, but it's where you pile up a bunch of things on your head. Tyler does it, Cami does it. It's a really cool look. This look sort of came to popularity around the 2010, 2013 OTT suite style, and it's something that I really enjoyed. But it is rather stressful to have so many things on your head at once. So that's why my idea to kind of put it on a headband, I think will be the least stressful and the easiest for me to obtain. I was largely inspired by Moon Bunny, who has a headband headpiece that has a bunch of different toy heads that she's made. And I really want to buy the bear one whenever it's available again, or maybe I can commission her for it. But unfortunately, it wasn't within my budget this month. So I wanted to originally like get one and then also make one. But I think that in the future I will get one and maybe like do a video around styling it. I was also inspired by a doll artist called Caramel Aw. And I am definitely not gonna do her justice. Her The headpieces that she creates for Blythe dolls are incredible. I also want to one day commission her to make one that a person could wear because they're phenomenal and like amazing. I have this plushie from Mary Berry. It's a Rilakkuma cupcake and I've really wanted to put this on my head for the longest time but I felt like it was just too massive to be on its own. But then my parents sent me these little keychains from Daiso from the Rilakkuma Sweet series and I think that I can make a head arrangement that will balance this big beast. And I got this fabric headband from another video which you will see next week. No, what the f What the f is this? Brace yourselves for that one. It's a little bit of a nightmare. I have run into another issue when it comes to making this video, and that is that we are on lockdown right now. So all of the craft stores are closed. So I had a really hard time finding other headbands like this. So for the other two, I'm gonna be using the smaller headband. I don't know how this is gonna work out. I might have to like glue two of them together. We'll see. I hope this isn't my downfall. We don't have Target in Canada. The closest thing to a Target or like a department store with a bunch of different things all in one would be like Costco and Walmart. And I don't live near either of those. So my only option was to get things from the dollar store. Luckily, our dollar store has a huge, huge craft section. And I went in with really clear ideas for each headband and what I wanted to get. And then when I got into the actual store, it was chaos and it was super crowded. <laughs> and I just frantically grabbed a lot of things and I hope that somehow it will come together. <laughs> I don't know what this is gonna be. I hope that at least one of these is wearable and that I'm happy with it. I figured out the layout of where I wanted each of the kumas to go, then cut off the straps and tags. After this, I panicked a little bit because I don't know how to sew and I didn't know what the best way to do this would be or if I even could do this. I started to lose confidence but roughly marked where I wanted them to go and just went for it. At first I tried to keep them pinned on the headband but then I decided to take them off and just leave the safety pins in place of where I wanted them to go. This was not done with the best skill or precision, but once I got into the swing of it, I really enjoyed it. I made sure to anchor each piece to the headband and then smaller pieces of the plushies to each other. 
The Rilakkuma cupcake had a cardboard bottom and I contemplated cutting into it and looping the headband through and then sewing it up, but I didn't end up doing that because it just seemed like too much work. Now, I really wanted to do something with a Furby. In my original video, I tried to place a Furby baby on my head, but this time around, I'm using McDonald's Furby toys. I wanted to recolor and decorate them. I noticed this one had floating eye chips and I attempted to open it in order to replace them, but I didn't have the right screwdriver, so I just decided to paint over them. I protected their fluffs of hair with painter's tape. I wanted to use spray paint for this originally, but I was only able to get acrylic paint, which is not the best. It will probably end up flaking off later and I will probably repaint them later on. There also was no white available because it's winter season and I guess everyone is painting snow. <laughs> I went ahead and tried to coat these Furbies with many layers of paint, but I was really nervous that the colors would not fully show up or cover the original color. This is a truly cursed sight. I know I should have put a horror warning on this video. I kept adding layer after layer of paint onto them and then let them dry overnight. I went through everything I bought to start to plan for my Caramel Awe style inspired headpiece when I realized all I bought were pom-poms. I wanted to get styrofoam balls and some felting materials and other pieces to include in this, but all I had were pom-poms. I came up with a plan to make this sort of pom-pom tiara shape, and I decided to use a glue gun rather than sew these just so it would be faster. I made sure to glue them down from one side so that the glue clumps wouldn't be visible on both sides. I ended up filling in more spaces and covering glue spots with more tiny pom-poms. Now back to the Furbies. I painted the whites of their eyes with nail polish because that's all I had. I decided to give them these gem eyes, that way they could have the same sort of faces even though they were different models. I painted the pupils to match each of them and hot glue gunned them down. I ended up cutting the fabric off of the two smaller headbands and gluing them together because I realized that the weight of the Furby would not be able to be supported by just one of these headbands. And then I ended up gluing and wrapping yarn in the headband. I don't really want the headband itself to be visible when I wear this. I think I'm just gonna stick it into wigs, but I wanted to kind of cover the rough spots of the headband. I wanted to decorate them more because of my inspirations, laser kitten, and only Furbs. And I also was thinking back to these deco headphones Zoo and Audrey wore for Trashy Life. And this was the vibe I was really going with this headpiece. I added gems into the Furby's ears and the outer two bellies. Then I assembled them onto the headpiece one at a time using hot glue to hold them in place, but cement glue so that overnight they would dry and really adhere to the headband. Now let's take a look at the final results. I feel like I'm low in frame, but then I have these big headpieces to put on, so maybe it will balance it out. I'm honestly so happy with how all of these turned out. I wanted to go for a like 2010s live journal crafting era type of feel, and I feel that I really got that with all of these. First, let's try on the Rilakkuma crown, and I'm already so happy with this one. See, it doesn't fully fit in frame. <laughs> I have to be even lower. I'm really happy with this one. When I first started putting it together, I was kind of worried, like, what am I doing? I don't sew normally. I don't know how to sew. But once I got started and I kind of got in the rhythm of it, I was really happy with it, and it really made me want to just, like, go overboard and sew a bunch of stuffed animals to headpieces and I absolutely love it. I love it with this uh, dress because this is like a crane machine, crane game dress, so I feel like I have the prizes of the crane game on my head. I found these three 
little mogwai that I bought on Zen Plus a while back and I think that I am confident enough to make a headband of them as well. So please check out my Instagram because I'm sure that I will be wearing these in more ways and making more ridiculous, fun, over-the-top headpieces. This is really lightweight, surprisingly, and they feel very anchored in and safe. I would definitely feel confident wearing this to a convention or to a meetup. I don't know if I could say the same for the other ones, but sewing these in was a really solid way of putting this together and I really am happy with it. And this pom-pom crown. This pom-pom tiara isn't exactly what I had planned to make, but when I got all of my supplies, I realized that I really only had pom-poms, but I'm still happy with how it looks. I think that it would be really fun with my Kaneko blouse in kind of like a clowny look. It's really lightweight. I hot glue gunned it because I had a hot glue gun and I wanted to use it and I thought that it'd be quicker than sewing it, but they definitely feel a little bit flimsy compared to my Rilakkuma crown. I think that if I were to make this again, I would definitely take the time and just sew it all in and then I would definitely feel confident wearing it outside and for a long amount of time and to an event or convention. I'm worried that if I stretch this headband at all that it's gonna pop these little Furbies off. I glue this down with cement glue as well as hot glue. I use the hot glue to sort of hold them together while the cement glue was setting because it had to set overnight and I kept it upside down with like weights on either side so hopefully they will stay in and stay on. The way that the Furbies are anchored onto the headband is kind of forced the headband to be in a shape that's a little bit too narrow for my head. There's a little bit of space here. I would not be confident wearing this to an event. This is definitely like a photo shoot online event, like an at home headpiece. I am really happy with how it turned out. I wanted to go for this sort of like 2010s deco, live journal craft Tarina Tarantino um, kind of vibe and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I wish that I had better supplies to make them. I might remake a headband like this with actual proper paint and maybe deco them even more. I like really am getting back into more nostalgic older deco styles. I painted these to try to match this dress because I thought that this dress is really over the top and loud and that it would kind of pair nicely with it. They're also like toys and there's toys all over this dress. So I'm really scared to move my head. I feel like it's probably safer than I think it is, but I'm just nervous. It is quite heavy. I think that if I did this again, I would gut the inside of the Furbies, maybe like cut the backs off of them and just have the fronts and take out the mechanisms inside. These two on the edges have wheels in them, so they're meant to like roll. And then the center one has like a sound box in it. And I glued the wheels in place before uh, placing it on my headpiece. Like I filled in the wheel crack with glue so that it wouldn't roll around and that it could stick on more solidly. I'm really happy <laughs> with all of these wacky headpieces. Please let me know which one is your favorite. I have actually made a headpiece before. This is Treasure Chest from Twinkle Mermaid. I got a box from Michaels that is a little wooden treasure chest and I filled it up with goodies and painted it to match the one that's in the print. And then I just added alligator clips to the bottom. I encourage you to just take a look at your prints and see things in them that might inspire you. You might even notice new things in your dress details that you didn't see before and have fun. Please tag me with anything that you make. I would love to see. I think that would be so cool. And as always, stay lovely.